Boys and girls, we are creating a freaking movement today. So I want you guys to stay tuned. Guess what? If you guys are new to the freaking channel, smash that subscribe button, hit the like button. But guess what? We're starting something new here on Kicking the Bass TV. You know what it's called? It's called Big Bass Energy, baby. You guys are probably saying, no, what the heck are you talking about, bro? And I'm saying, you know, it's Big Bass Energy, man. People make fun of me all the time and they're like, no, well, man, why you get so excited over a little three pounder, four pounder, you know, five pounder, sometimes even an 11 pounder screaming to the top of my lungs. And guys, it's the big bass energy, baby. I get a lot of comments in the comment section below when people are saying, you know, no, uh, you know, I can't catch fish over two pounds. You gotta have the big bass energy, man. If you don't have the big bass energy, man, if you ain't pumped, if you ain't hyped, if you ain't ready to go fishing, then you ain't gonna catch them, man. So we're creating a movement. Hashtag big bass energy down below this is about to become a thing right now you guys are watching it hashtag big bass energy okay the next fishing video you watch i don't care whose channel it's on every fishing video you watch for the next five months man hashtag team ktb tv hashtag big bass energy let's create a movement man let's get more people out get more people fishing get more people catching big bass more importantly and by the way if you guys want to check out some of the merch be sure to click the link down below i can't even, hold on see look at that yeah i got a ton of different designs on the website man we're gonna have some new shirts coming out soon but if you guys want to check it out if you guys want to support team ktb tv it means so much to me man i love seeing people repping the freaking merch man you guys can check it out in the comment section below. If you guys are wondering what we're doing today, we're going to be searching for some double digit bass, man. So you guys love the all on fishing videos and that's what we're doing today. We're gonna be going out on the lake. We're gonna be trying to catch some massive, massive, massive fish. And I wanna take you guys along the journey. I'm gonna explain everything I'm doing today. Let's go ahead and cut into it. I'm not gonna talk anymore. All I gotta say, hashtag big bass energy, baby. We made it out to the beautiful area that we're gonna be fishing today. Searching for double digit bass, episode one here. Chatterbait, big 11 inch worm. We're about to get it started. We're gonna start with the chatterbait. Usually when I come to places, I like to start off with the moving bait. And if they're not wanting to eat it, that's when I switch over to something slower. But both of these baits right here are gonna be baits that big fish will eat and it will attract the old big ones. Starting off with the chatter donk, got the old six inch trailer on there that I was talking about in the last episode. I've been doing very well on for some reason with the black and blue, that paired up just works amazingly. So, all right, let's give it a shot. We're gonna figure out, you know, how these fish are eating today, how we're gonna have to work our bait because that's probably gonna be the biggest thing today on catching them is figuring out how they want the bait. I can go reel this chatter bait all day, all day. that doesn't mean that they're gonna eat it. I might have to drag it on the bottom. I might have to hop it off the bottom. I might have to give it some really fast rips. So we're gonna experiment a bunch. working this worm through a brush pile right over there on the other side. There's a big shade line. There's a bunch of brush that hangs off the bank. It goes all the way from that bank, probably out here in the middle. I mean, there's a ton of brush over that way. They're in this huge worm, seeing if we can pick one up. I don't understand why there wouldn't be one in that tree. And I also wouldn't understand why he wouldn't eat a big worm. got him oh he came off that is so weird how they bite it out of here gosh dang it that was my first bite today I feel like a decent one too you just had the tail i bet you when i bring this in there's some marks on it I'm trying to make sure he's not behind it <gasps> i was about to say i'm not gonna reel it in because he might be behind it and he sure was he just never had it he had the tail oh my god that was a big hit, guy Freak, freak, freak. Guys, that was a massive fish right there. I don't know if you guys heard my rod whistle. I'm trying to make sure he's not behind it. Gosh, he ate it twice. Or it might have been a different, it could have been a different one. All I know is we had two really good bites in that cast. I was just about to say, I'm not gonna reel it in because he might be behind it. Right when I said that, he picked it up. Holy cow. That was two very good bites. So we made an adjustment. We tied on a red rattle trap. You guys are probably wondering, Noah, why the heck are you throwing a red rattle trap in the summer? Now let me throw this around on you guys. Let me ask you guys a question. Who is throwing a red rattle trap in the summer? 
All right, that enough time? Nobody, exactly. So listen, throw stuff that people aren't throwing. Get out of the norm every once in a while. I mean, chatter donk, I mean, what, what's bassing without a chatter, chatter donk? But every once in a while, you gotta pick up something different and try something new. Try something that people aren't throwing because then the fish haven't seen it. See what I'm saying? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, digging on the red rattle trap. Oh my gosh. Big, big, she's barely hooked. Big, big. Oh, 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 oh. Look at that, look at that. Look how barely he's hooked. Look at, look at how he is barely hooked. Oh my gosh, we got to get a weight on this guy. That's an easy five pounder. Oh my gosh, he is barely hooked. Look at that, like three casts on the red rattle trap. What did I say? Who's throwing it? Who is throwing it, people? That's a five pounder. Look at that. Look how fat. Whew. I'm shaking. All right, zeroed out. Are you kidding me? My weight skills, man. Five pounds, one ounce. <sighs> That dude, that's a joker right there. That is a joker. Five pound, one ounce, first fish today. Big bass energy, baby. Hashtag big bass energy down in the comment section below. That's how we do it here on Kicking the Bass TV. Fat five pounder. Oh, that's beautiful. Freaking tank, first fish today. Called him. So he's about a five pounder. Red trap. Look at that dude. Oh gosh, it's a tank. Look at him swim back down to the depth into the depths man that is why we bass fish every day guys just for moments like that i picked up the red trap i told you i said why am i throwing it nobody's throwing it three casts later boom five pounder that just shows you right there you gotta have that big bass energy too man big bass energy baby so there's one thing I would like to talk about so this is the red trap that I'm throwing it's a one knocker okay it's not like a basic trap hear that you hear that one hard knock okay I couldn't get those fish to bite we threw a big worm we threw a chatterbait and they were just barely ticking it I thought we needed something that we need to get them to react to and this thing is exactly what it did okay we got a bunch of rock right here I threw it right on the edge of the rock he picked it up right there right off this like looking like little boat ramp he picked that sucker up, man. Five pounder. First fish today. Let's get it, baby. Smash the like button for that one. We might be on to something, boys. A red trap next to some rock. Yeah, that's a must. Five pounder. Yes, sir. See, he barely swiped at it. If that was a chatterbait, he probably wouldn't even have got hooked. See, this one has treble hooks. You see how he's barely hooked? He's barely hooked on that last hook. I actually got one of his scales. Look at this. I got one of his scales on the hook right here. Get that off. But yeah, this just one of the back trebles was hooked on him. See, they're just swiping. They're not really committing. So you want to get a reaction bite. When the fish are slow, you usually think of throwing a worm. You usually think of throwing something like that that, you know, is very slow and they're going to pick up. But sometimes they don't want to eat it. They really don't want to eat it. You got to get something that pisses them off. I just got slammed sideways. That's the thing. See how they're not eating it? They're slapping at it, but you want something to react. You want something to go by their face to trick them into biting. You want to piss them off, okay? And this is one of the best little adjustments I could have done today. I'm glad I can show you guys because next time you go out on the water, if you're having difficulties, maybe pick something up that they're going to react on and it'll help you get more bites. But that is a good way to start searching for double digit bass right there. That's not a double digit. We're halfway there. That was a five pounder, but it was a good one, man. It was a good one. We cannot complain. All right, another trick I want to show you guys while I'm at it. You see how my hook's on my line? You can usually just pull it in take it off. But let me show you something quick, okay? Hold your bait out. This is probably one of the most valuable tips. Just tap the end of your rod. Boom. See that? Done. That is one of the most valuable things I've learned from fishing right there. I mean, that will save you so much time. It is a lifesaver, baby. 
All right, let's get back in here. Let's catch another one. Come on, right off that point. Yep. Big one. Looks like about a four. Might be bigger. I can't tell. I haven't got a good look at him. Oh, gosh. Come on, baby. Oh, choked it. He actually ate it. I ain't even a four pounder. Look how he choked it. Gosh. It's a two and a half, three pounder. Look at him choke that sucker. That's how you want him to eat it right there. Oh, he ain't quite three, I don't think. God, look how he ate that thing. See, that's crazy. But then again, I, I was changing my retrieve. Look at that beautiful fish. We're going to get a quick weight just to do it. I'm thinking he's two and a half to two and three quarters. If I could guess, I'd say he's two pounds, nine ounces, okay? That's my guess. Oh, he is two and three quarters on the money. Two pounds, 12 ounces. Okay, awesome, man, awesome, awesome. This isn't a double digit, almost a three pounder, two pounds, three, two pounds, 12 ounces. So two and three quarters, beautiful bass right there. Let's get him back, that's awesome for the second fish today. Man, we got quality, let me tell you. Got a five pounder and almost a three pounder. Get him back, oh, there he goes. Oh yeah, he was aggressive, awesome, man. Through that trap off that point, I kind of called it. I knew there was a fish there. When you see the obvious like that, you always need to take it into consideration, man. I can't, I can't address that enough, man. You see a lay down, you see a point, you see a little drop off, whatever it is, you need to cast at it. Okay, we're gonna beam another one out there. I promise you there's another fish off that point. He ain't the only one. He reacted on it. See what I'm saying? If we had a worm, he might not have ate it. He might have pecked at it. If we had that chatterbait, he might have just pecked at it if we're hopping out on the bottom. This thing was going right past him. He had to make a decision in the moment. He's either gonna eat it or he wasn't. And then he actually legit ate it. He didn't just swipe at it, he engulfed it. That was an awesome bite right there. And like I said, a red trap in the summer. You guys are probably calling me crazy when I tied that sucker on, but guess what? You know, I'm, I adjusted and now we're catching him. Couldn't catch him on the big worm and chatterbait. Put us on a trap, something a little more aggressive, something that's gonna put a bunch of thump, boom. So I wanna talk about, all right, this is where we walked up on this place. Okay, we just walked up to this pond. We set our rods down. Let's look at it real quick, okay? So this is the whole area that I'm looking at. Let's look at the things that kind of stick out, okay? We have this little boat ramp, has some gravel, pushes off. It's got a fairly steady drop off. It's got some rock on it. This is good. You want to throw at this, okay? You got a pipe. You want to throw at the end of that. Sometimes fishing off the end. You got a seawall on that house over there. Pretty shallow, but still, fish will push up on that, especially the push-up bait fish. You know, fish will feed up on those walls, especially in the morning time and when the sun's going down. Another pipe over there. That's awesome. Fountain, okay? I know it sounds weird, but like I said, puts off some water. From my experience, it seems like when the fishing's tough, if you fish around some of these places where it has moving water, and I know that's not natural, but I feel like it helps. A point right off there, right off that point, there's some rocks. Lay downs, I see one or two right there. I'm really paying attention to that. Lay downs, I see one or two right there. Concrete pillars, I see some right there. Very shallow, like I said, but still fish can hang around it. Slight shade line. Another big bush, shade line, fish, should hang inside of that. You guys need to look at all these things when you're playing out, okay? And then you start envisioning, right here is a small like canal looking thing that goes back in. Now you gotta envision that little drop off that's, that's down the middle. You wanna fish down the middle of that. I'm not saying don't throw at the banks, I'm not saying don't throw at the seawall, but really focus in on the middle of that. Those fish could be tucked down, sitting in that little bowl, okay? Picture it, on each side of the bank it goes like this and like this creates a little bowl at the bottom. It's a little hole that those fish are gonna sit in. It's like a little ditch. So I really pay attention to that. Same way with out here, same way with that point. It's gonna drop off steadily. You need to pay attention to these little things. All right, we're walking down to a new area right now. We're gonna be breaking this down. Let me know if you guys like this style of video where I'm kinda, you know, taking you guys along with the journey, vlogging it, 
you know, talking about what I'm doing, how I'm catching these fish, and how I'm predicting where they're at, and trying to figure them out and adjusting to the day. We got the same baits on, trap and a chatter bait. I'm gonna chuck it around the trap for a minute. Or actually, I might start with the, we'll start with the trap, okay? We've had the best luck with that so far. We'll start with the trap, and then we might, you know, go a little bit slower with the chatter bait. Let's go ahead and get it. Trap has been the best to us today. So we're gonna get it. We gonna get it with the old trapperoo. Let's check our line, that's important. Slight fray, okay? Here's a good learning lesson, retie. I'm kind of bad with it sometimes, it only takes a few seconds, it's worth doing. We got a slight fray right out or not. That could be from us, you know, going across some of those rocks. It can be, even be from those fish choking it. Um, I really think the last one that we caught, that's probably what that's from. You know, it got it all the way in the back of his gullet and uh, that can cause it to fray a bit. So always check your line because you never want to lose a big one. I always talk about this, but if you guys are wondering what knot I tie is a uni knot, I have a video on my channel about it. You can go watch it if you're curious. Very, very, very strong knot. Oh, that's not good. I know exactly what I got. All right. I, acci I accidentally hooked the, the line from this i really don't want to break this off because i think this is my only trap with me I'm searching my truck after this but i'm pretty positive it's my only one with me it might be hard to get off it's either going to come off really easy or be hard gosh that sucks see it right there it looks like it's a rope it's not even like a regular cord i don't know if that's going to come off yeah i might have to snap this one gosh dang it right when we're getting on them oh wait oh my gosh Oh my gosh. Oh no. I went way too quick with that. I think we're gonna have to do it. Risk it for the biscuit. Ah, oh, just a little too short. Oh, my rod is literally at the end of it. Why is there a knot in that? I feel like I'm almost getting leverage on it. That is, that sucks, man. Right when we start catching them on a certain bait. Uh, nothing you can do about that though, that's part of fishing. We'll be okay, we'll go back and rig something else, but we'll try out the chatter donkey for a minute. Hey brother, can you do me a favor? Hold up. I broke off my bait right here, do you see if you can get it? Yeah, here I'll show you. Oh, holy crap, this is, this is legendary. I think I might have to hook the line again. Oh my God, you're awesome, dude. Thank you so much. You today? Um, I caught two. Two bass? Yeah, two bass. How big? Uh, one of them was like five pounds. Oh yeah? Yeah. Right, it was a good one. Yeah, they're, they're biting a little weird. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. <laughs> All right, brother, you have a good one. Thank you. Man, see, th th these are the things. Like, this is why I love fishing, man. Especially when you see people like that and you, and you meet new people. I got him. Biggin'. Oh my gosh. Oh, he's not even that big. Why does he feel so big? It's like two pounds. He's on some rock. Boom. Yes, two pounder. Not bad, man. I wish I would've caught him in front of that man. Look at that. Barely grabbed that. See how they're eating this chat? Look at that. Wasn't even hooked. Just lifted him up. <laughs> you just saw that's awesome man but what i was saying is man that's why i love fishing is talking to new people and getting to meet guys and like if you guys ever see me in public please come up to me and talk to me i really appreciate you guys support i love to talk to you guys and i know that's not a supporter but just meeting new people and man look at that beautiful two pound bass all right buddy thank you for biting man it wasn't on the trap but it was on the chatter dog Stop it, would you keep on shopping?